We know that bonds payable are one of the most difficult things that students struggle with in financial accounting. So in this video, what I'm going to do is solve a question with a bond payable semi-annual payments. Let's read the question first. Orange Corporation on January 1st, 2021 issues a $150,000 four-year 2% bond. Let's just unpack that for a moment. The $150,000 is the face value of the bond. It's the amount that the bond purchaser is going to receive in four years time. It's a four year bond, which means that the bond purchaser purchases the bond now, today, January 1st, 2021, and in four years time expects to be paid back. The 2% is the coupon rate on the bond, the amount of cash that the purchaser will receive in this case, semi-annually. Let's move on. The market rate at the time the bond was issued is 4%. The market rate is the rate that the bond purchaser could have received if they had purchased an other investment vehicle in the open market at this time. So you can see that the bond purchaser would have received a higher interest rate had they chosen to purchase a different investment vehicle. This is important when we move forward. Interest is paid semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st every year. Orange Corporation has a December 31st year end. 1. Calculate the bond's present value on January 1st, 2021 and record the entry for its sale. What we have to do is we have to calculate the present value of all the future cash flows. We know why we have to calculate the present value. This bond is outstanding for more than one year and any liability that is outstanding for more than one year must take into account the time value of money. All right, let's do the calculation. I'm going to move the page up. We have to do the present value of the principal amount. And we also have to do the present value of the interest payments. Let's do the present value of the principal first. We know that the principal is the face amount, which is $150,000. We have to multiply this times a factor to determine the present value. How do we find the factor? Well, we have to use the present value tables. This is the present value of a single sum in the future, and that relates to the $150,000 because the bondholders are going to receive, and we will have to pay in four years time, $150,000. What I need to know is what interest rate should I use and what number of periods? Let's go back to the question. The interest rate is equal to the market rate divided by the number of interest payments per year. The market rate, remember, is 4%. And the number of payments per year is 2. So the interest rate we're going to use on our present value tables is 2%. Now we have to determine the periods. I'm going to move my page down. The number of periods is equal to the number of years the bond is going to be outstanding. But this time, we multiply it times the number of interest payments per year. In this case, the bond will be outstanding for four years. And we're going to multiply it times the number of payments per year, which is two. So the number of periods in this case is eight. We're going to use this information to determine the present value factor. Let's go to the present value tables. So remember, the interest rate we calculated was 2% and the number of periods was 8. If we draw a line until they meet, we can see that the present value factor for a single sum is equal to 0 0.85349. Let's use that in our formula. Multiply it out, it's equal to $128,023.50. So we've got the present value of the single sum, but we still need the present value of the interest payments. We know the interest payments are going to be the face amount times the coupon rate. $150,000 is the face amount multiplied times the 2%. Ah, but wait! 2% is the annual rate. We've got to divide this by the number of payments per year, which is 2. So 
we are going to actually calculate the 150,000 multiplied times 1%, which is equal to $1,500. That's the amount of interest that we will have to pay every six months, June 30th and December 31st. We have to now calculate the factor that will allow us to convert this into the present value of all those future payments, eight future payments. Again, we're going to use the 2% and the eight periods, but this time, because we will pay equal interest payments periodically over the time period, four years, we have to use the present value tables for an ordinary annuity. Notice, because the payments are at the end of the period, end of every six months, we're going to use the ordinary annuity, annuity in arrears, end of period payments. Again, what we're going to do is look at the 2%. And we're going to look at the eight periods. We're going to draw a line and draw another line. And this is the factor we need, 7.32548. Let's use it to calculate the present value of all those interest payments. We're going to take the 1,500 and multiply it times the factor. That will be the present value of all the future payments. Add them together. $139,011.70. Now, why is this lower than the face amount of $150,000? Why are the bondholders not willing to pay the 150000 Because they could have purchased an investment vehicle that would earn higher interest in the open market at the same level of risk. Therefore, the bond purchasers are going to bid down the value of the bond until the yield on the bond, the actual effective interest rate that they're going to earn, is going to be equal to what the market is offering, 4%. So the bondholders are only willing to pay $139,011.70 for this bond. We're going to round this just to make the calculations a little bit easier to $139,012. Let's do the entry that we would have to make when we sold this bond to the bondholders. January 1st, 2021. What did the company get? Well, Orange Corporation got cash. $139,012. What did they give away? They gave away a promise to pay the bondholders in the future. A liability called bond payable. $139,012. Now, note that I am using the net method in this example. I could have used the gross method, but I decided not to. Now, what would this entry have looked like had I used the gross method instead? I would have still had a debit to cash for the exact same amount. But my credit to the bond payable would have been for the face amount. I would have then had to have an additional account called discount on bond payable. That discount would have been for the difference between the face amount, $150,000, and the present value amount, $139,012. So that's $10,988. Note that this does not change at all the amount that is recorded under the non-current liabilities on our Statement of Financial Position, also called the balance sheet. In this case, under the gross method, these two accounts would both show up on the Statement of Financial Position as a non-current liability. The bond payable would have shown up as a bond payable. The discount on bond payable is a contra liability account and it would have reduced the amount of the bond payable that is reported on the Statement of Financial Position slash balance sheet. In the next video, I'm going to continue with this question and show you the amortization schedule as well as the entries that you would have to make.